Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are on this planet Earth. We're here with another edition of Wowza Live with two very special guests and a truly, truly unique technology. And it's a technology that personally speaks uh, volumes in my world, which is open water safety. And uh, I want to introduce uh, C CEO Mark and his colleague, Adam. And so, hello, gentlemen. Hey, yeah, I met Mark last year. Um, immediately, within 30 seconds, I was impressed with his mm -hmm. technology. Instead of me trying to explain it, Mark and Adam, if you can explain your technology, the, the problem you're solving, any other information you'd like. Yeah, thanks, Stephen. Appreciate it. Appreciate the opportunity here. Yeah, so uh, I think it was over a year ago now that time flies, uh, we met. And uh, if what your old uh, college teammate, Bobby Hackett, is yes. uh, one of our investors, actually, and Great. he's been instrumental in, uh, in helping us uh, really expand inside the, the aquatics world. Uh, my personal background is really on the technology <laughs> side. I've been in the wireless technology uh, pretty much my whole career. And I've been doing tech startups uh, for the past 20 years or so. Uh, and my co-founder, Dave Cutler, uh, has been in the aquatic safety technology specifically for, for a dozen years. And uh, Adam just joined us as our VP sales. Adam can uh, tell you about his background. Yeah, hello, everyone. And, and thanks again, uh, Stephen, for having us. So uh, as Mark mentioned, I've, I've recently come on as, as a vice president of sales here at, the, at Wave. And I spent the last 20 plus years working in and in sales, uh, specifically technology sales, um, as my uh, full-time job. And on the side, I've had the pleasure of working very closely in the aquatics uh, industry for about the last 11 years, this last seven years as the uh, president of our local uh, competitive year-round uh, swim team that's aligned with uh, USA Swimming. So just uh, couldn't be more excited to be a part of um, you know, a company like Wave and you know, to your point, Stephen, when I, as soon as I saw this this technology, and with with working closely with our swim lesson program, and we have over 200 kids at any given time uh, taking swim lessons and, and having 20 plus lifeguards, uh, seeing the, the ability for this to um, re really make an impact has been uh, uh, just really exciting. So uh, happy to be here, and uh, thanks again for the opportunity. Great, great, and and really, what we're solving here is the very unfortunate. Uh, situation of drowning, uh, whether it's in a pool, in a lake, ocean, you name it, wherever uh, children and adults gather, I mean, there is nothing that's more heart-wrenching than, than a drowning. And that's really at the nut of what uh, Mark and Adam and their colleagues are bringing to the table. Mark, can you give us an overview of your technology and how you solve this? Yeah, yeah, and just you know, just to echo on that, most a lot of people know the statistics. Some don't. You know, the U.S. alone has about four thousand drowning deaths a year. About a thousand of those are children, and one of the the shocking statistics is uh, for children. The CDC had a, a one research report that said eighty eight percent of those ch child drownings were on some under some form of adult supervision. So it. We, our technology really speaks to the problem is that drowning is hard to detect. It's, it's <clears> that people never wave, they never splash, they don't yell because they can't. They silently slip underwater and it's basically you have to be lucky to notice. And that's obviously the, the, the rate of drowning has not gone down. It's the number two cause of accidental <clears> death for children in the United States. And it's the only cause, leading cause of accidental death that hasn't declined. And we argue because there's really been no technology applied to it. We're just relying on people being lucky enough to notice when someone slips under. And obviously in open water, that's even, even harder because once you slip under, it's not like a you know, clear bottom pool where you can look and, and see the body eventually, hopefully. Um, so it's, we, uh, you know, Stephen, you were great to invite us out to uh, the Redondo Beach uh, Open Water Summit uh, last fall where we, uh, had a number of swimmers using our technology, and uh, we learned a lot in that, and now we're, we're rolling that out uh, to more open water swim environments, which we'll get to in a second. Um, but essentially, our, with the way our, tech, our technology is about measuring facial submersion, which sounds a little odd, but that's, we think, it, it's the gold standard of drowning detection. There's a few different techniques out there if people try to 
recognize it through video or have something on your wrist or other uh, techniques. But if your face is underwater, you can't breathe. And obviously if it happens too long, you have a problem. So our system uh, involves a wearable. You kind of see uh, one of our uh, systems here. And this is what we call a tracker. Um, kind of see this super lightweight. It is super comfortable. Uh, Adam can tell you some, some good stories. It just wraps around there. And we, we've worked with thousands of swimmers and 98% of them forget they have it on as soon as they get in the water. We also have uh, some goggle clips that just slide onto the side of your goggles as another alternative way of doing it. And that technology, the wearable is what enables to measure that facial submersion. And if, uh, if I share the screen here, we can explain a little more about how that works. So the tracker that goes around your head and then the goggle clip, it does the exact same thing, functionality yep. wise, okay. Yep, it's essentially we're getting um, the, 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 the beacons, uh, you know, toward the front of the face is, is the idea. Got it. And that, and when those are underwater, we, we know it. And if both of them are underwater, as long as you're, you know, coming up to take, take a, a breath, if you're from the swimming freestyle, as long as you're taking a breath every 20 or 30 seconds, whatever you have that set at, that's a configurable time limit, then uh, we know you're okay. But if you're down for longer than that, there's a number of uh, different alarms uh, that, that can go off depending on, on the situation. Yeah, and it's, it's been interesting, Stephen, to, uh, to see as I'm out uh, you know, sharing this, this great technology with folks. It's the first, I don't want to say objection necessarily, but first question I get is, oh, you mean you have to wear you know, something like this. And this, this is an environment of swimming where, um, you know, most of the swimmers are, you know, most people around the pool are either wearing, uh, depending on what they're doing, they're wearing goggles, uh, they're wearing a swim cap, they're wearing sunglasses. And so, and so they're, they're, they think, oh, wow, you know, I, I have to wear this until they put it on or until we talk about it a little bit and they see just how comfortable it is. And to, uh, to Mark's point, how quickly they forget they have it on. And it's amazing to see it's, it's, it's almost funny to see how quickly that objection evaporates because of, of, of how comfortable this is, how natural it is uh, for, for the swimmer to use. And you'll even see here as Mark's walking through the demonstration that we were forced to create some technology to detect when people are walking out of the pool wearing these because they forget to have them on. So it's been, uh, been yeah, exactly. Uh, exit detector. <laughs> yeah, the exit detector. People forget uh, they have them on. So, so the real key here is actually you can preset that uh, facial submersion for five seconds, 20 seconds, whatever, whatever you and the, the uh, client would like, correct? Yep. The client controls that, right? So um, you can have it for different times. You know, if it's a bunch of small kids, you can set that for very short. If you got, you know, experienced lap swimmers that you, you want to set that longer, you, you can change that very, very simply. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So th this gives you, um, th this diagram here we're looking at gives you an idea of kind of how the system works. Um, it is the, the main hub, the central system down at the bottom here, it's entirely portable. It weighs about 15 pounds. It's easy to carry around. You can take it down to the beach, take it out on a boat, put it out on the pier, wherever you need it for an open water swim. And that has about a thousand foot radius. Um, so that, that can, you know, easily cover, uh, you know, a lot of courses you're going out you know, a few hundred meters out to a turn buoy to another turn buoy and back. One can easily cover that. Um, when we did the 10K at uh, the Open Water Summit, we actually had it in the lead boat that was actually going out and tracking the, those lead swimmers. So it, there's different ways to do it. Um, and essentially, we'll just give you a little uh, interactive thing. This is our website here, which is wavebds.com and drowningdetectionsystem.com. And this is just a little interactive thing here where you can kind of see the different parts of it. Uh, this you know, zooms in on this hub, which is a central piece. Um, and that it, it has 18 hour battery life. It has different alarms, a very loud siren. It's got a very bright strobe. It's got a cellular modem, so it's internet connected. So you can do text or phone or email alerts if you want to do that. Um, so, so that's what you put I mean, on the boat, the lead boat. Uh, in the 10 kilometer race off of the coast of Southern California, correct? Right. right. Okay. okay. The, the, the beautiful route that, that we're going to use for the Olympics in uh, yes. seven years. Right? Yes. Okay. And, and, and Stephen, I think that, you know, that, that just screams just how portable the, the, the system is. Yes. Um, so not only can you take it from pool to pool and 
and, and quickly set it up or take it out to the beach or, or wherever they quickly set it up. But it can be portable as it's working, which yeah. is uh, just, you know, just, just stands alone as far as, uh, you know, drying detection uh, systems. Correct. And this yeah. illustration here, so you said a thousand feet, so more or less 300 meters. Right. Um, and, and that hub can be placed anywhere in a pool, uh, yep. anywhere in a, in a uh, you know, along the beach or on the uh, lake right. or on a boat. That's, yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. And so this is um, wearables. It was, with, I said we had a couple thousand people using these. You see in the middle here, Steve Lundquist, uh, great Olympic gold medalist um, at the Swim Across America event. We did uh, a few events with them last year to kind of really fine tune the logistics of how you support an open water race event. Um, with the wearables and the equipment. And we learned a lot as we did also out in the Redondo Beach um, in that. Um, but it, it's, uh, it's been great. I mean, it's, the, the reaction has been great. It, it, this, I don't know if this little, little video is gonna show, it may not work, but uh, we just got lots of videos of, of kids and adults just having fun. They completely forget they have these things on and they just go about you know doing their thing. Um, we also, have in here show you the um, uh, if you can go back to the illustration I, so sure. let's say uh someone is submerged beyond let's say 10 seconds let's say the right. pool operator or the open water race director defines um you know an emergency is something more than 10 seconds right so the 10 second mark tell me can you Take me through what happens. Yeah, there's four kinds of alerts. Uh, we'll, we'll go to the, the staff bracelet. If there's lifeguards, this is, you know, in a more pool environment, that's kind of the prime or the, the initial warning. And, and a lot of pools want to give the lifeguard maybe five or 10 seconds to kind of rectify the situation before you have a broader alert. Yeah. So the first alert is we have these vibrating bracelets. Intentionally, there's nothing to look at on those. It's just so that, you know, lifeguards keep their eyes in the water. I think, Mark, that's important just to reinforce that that is um, using the app that can be um, uh, personalized per aquatic center. So, it, you know, how soon you want the, the lifeguard or whoever that to get that alert before the hub goes off, that's something that you can easily adjust and, and you, can, you can make it your own using the, uh, the very simple app. Right. A question, so, so in, a, in a practical situation, 10 seconds goes by, uh, let's say there's three lifeguards uh, at different parts of the pool. They all get that vibration ring at the same time. Right. Okay, right. got it. Right, right. And then, so there's three other kinds of alerts. There's, there's the, the audio, there's a very loud, uh, so like a siren uh, or ambulance siren speaker yeah. in that hub. And, and you can actually download any uh, wave audio file you want. You know, we have several defaults, anything from extremely attention getting to more like a coded message to lifeguards. Got it. Uh, but you can you know, download anything you want on that. And then the third is a visual, a very bright strobe uh, on that to get people's attention. And the fourth I mentioned is, is internet connected, right? So you can get a, you know, a text out to a phone or you can, you can theoretically call 911 uh, if you wanted to. You gotta you know, obviously work the logistics on that. Um, so is it, you can, you can control, you can sequence those, you can control which ones you do or don't do. You know, you have a lot of control and it's through a very simple uh, app, you know, that we have a management app to control this stuff. So, so now 10 seconds has gone by. The yeah. three lifeguards, their, their ring, their uh, 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 bracelet. bracelet rings. Um, vibrates, yeah. Vibrates, uh, let's say, uh, maybe after another 10 seconds, the hub strobe light goes off, let's say the uh, the siren is how do they know where they are in the um, in the pool is there any great question great question so for for you know normal size clear water pools it, it, it that we have deployed already it's really not an issue because you know there's just not that many areas to look right um, obviously in natural water uh, that gets to be more of a challenge and the location is more important. So what we are just now uh, putting out there, if I switch over to this little guy, is, is, is an additional uh, device that indicates location of where that swimmer last seen. Got it. Um, called location indicators. And in this little diagram you see, this is a, you know, there's a lake. If you had a 
you know, more like a camp setting where you had a, a rope line defining a, a swim area, you would have these uh, along that rope line and the one or two closest to where that person went under are gonna light up um, with a very intense stroke to, you know, to guide, guide the efforts. Got it. Um, what those look like a, a little bit closer um, in this view here for people that are watching video, um, it essentially, it has a two week battery pack on it. It's absolutely waterproof. Uh, it can be, it's on the water, it's on a, on a boat, a buoy, essentially. It can be either attached to a rope line or anchored from the bottom. Uh, and we see these for um, the open water, you know, races and open water training, you would have these around the course, right? If you had a, if you had an out and back uh, course, you could just have a rope line, you know, going from the start out to the turn buoy and you can put one of these every, you know, 25, 30 yards, ever, uh, you know, how, how, depends how, you know, precise you want it to be. And that is going to indicate the location. Got it. Got it. Wow. And, and uh, if uh, race directors, open water swimming race directors or, or, or coaches, USA Swimming or US Master Swimming or YMCA coaches would like to take their um, teams to the open water, you know, yeah. in lieu of pools being open, pools will gradually be opened as, right. as this lockdown uh, is, is relaxed. But uh, do they buy it? Do they rent it? Um, how, how does the business transaction work? Yeah, so, so right now we, we are uh, selling the systems, right? And, and so for um, teams, and Adam can, can chime in here, you know, the teams that normally have pools um, to, uh, you know, to swim in, but they're not now, our system is entirely portable, right? So this is, I stopped screen share so I can show you this, this thing. So this is a, a, a little unit called E20 that essentially is you know a compact all-in-one uh where you have the hub and you have the little storage things on the side obviously you know that has the, the siren and, and the strobe and all the technologies inside here um so that you know that can just as well work on the pool some you know some swim teams don't have their own pool they essentially are you know rent a pool as often as they need it and this actually is ideal for that you kind of take that wherever you go including now the open water. Um, and that, you know, as long as that's, you know, within that a thousand feet <clears> of where, uh, you know, the, the, your team is swimming, then they're covered. Great. Yeah, and Stephen, you know, again, having led a, uh, a competitive year round swim club for the past seven years, I can tell you, I've never seen such a focus than we've had over the past six weeks of finding a pool, right? <laughs> and no one wants to fall behind. Um, and, you know, you've got your, um, you know, your state zone, you know, junior national level swimmers, and they don't want to, you know, be missing swim time. And so we've had a lot of great conversations with clubs um, who are looking at this and their initial thought is because they're looking to find a, a, a place to swim and that's open water. And, you know, because they're opening up um, around the country at different times, but that, they seem to be opening up sooner than the pools, uh, definitely sooner than uh, the high school pools, at least in, in, in the areas where I've been talking with folks. And, you know, so they're looking at the technology and, you know, initially for the, the additional safety, additional peace of mind, both for them as well as their coaches, uh, lifeguards, and parents um, in the open water environment, which is new to a lot of them. So it's amazing how many fantastic competitive um, swimmers who've never swam open water. And this is, this is their first time doing it. And having that extra peace of mind so they're really uh, very excited about this and as they learn more about it I haven't had a single club tell me that they want to give it back or that they're gonna really want to have this open water but then when they get back to the high school or get back to their local you know aquatic center or YMCA they're no longer going to have it and you know and to Mark's point because you know some parts of the country a lot of club teams share a pool um, and so they can easily, like you say, they stow it in the backpack and they can bring it in for, for, you know, when they have the pool and they can take it home with them and they don't have to worry about their investment, you know, uh, not being treated the way, you know, they would treat it if it was their own. Yeah. Yeah. And what is your goal of this technology? I mean, you know, five years down the line, one year from now, what, what do you want to be doing with this technology? Yeah. I mean, we've designed it very explicitly to work everywhere. 
you know, it, it's, it's the only drowning detection system that, that can work everywhere, right? It's pools, it's lakes, it's open water. Um, and we've designed it to, to be able to drive the cost way, way down on it, you know, both on the system and on the wearables. So it really can be, you know, affordable in all environments. And, and ultimately, we think it'll be as rare in the future to go swimming without something like this as it is today for to you know, go cycling or skiing without a helmet, right? Yeah. I mean, those sports, no one wore helmets 20, 30 years ago. And, you know, the helmet manufacturers figured out how to make them light and comfortable and ventilate and all that good stuff. And once you did it, you're like, huh, why wouldn't I do it? And, and that's, you know, it's funny, it started at Bobby Hackett, right? He, when I first talked to him, he was like, oh, it's great. You know, he's really into water safety. And, you know, you know, kids definitely do this. And I said, well, you know, adults are also at risk, you know, and, and you know, three quarters of the drownings are adults in the United States, fatal drownings. And he said, ah, he was skeptical. He got, he got him in the pool. He swam a few laps back and forth. And he looked up at me and said, huh, I don't even know I have it on. Why wouldn't I wear this all the time? Yeah. Right. I was like, you're right. And there's no reason. So, you know, that's the goal is to get everyone covered. You shouldn't go in the water, no matter how good a swimmer you are, there's always some chance of something going wrong. Uh, and you, know, you should be protected. Yes, absolutely. And for those people in our audience who do not know of uh, Bobby Hackett, he was a great swimmer from New York City, um, graduated from Harvard, um, was a silver medalist at the age of uh, 17, um, 16 at the Olympic trials. Um, his, his age group records still are uh, held to this day. And this is a man who knows um, swimming. And, uh, you know, if he's been behind your company, that, that says a lot. But you've, all, you've also had a relationship with Swim Across America. Yeah, um, and, absolutely. Uh, he introduced me to Craig, Craig Beardsley, you know, who's yeah. uh, one of the, the main drivers there. And, uh, you know, they, they are super focused on safety. Um, they, they, it's an incredibly well-run organization. They run great events. And, and they have a lot of novice swimmers out there. And they are very, very high on safety, and they loved what we're doing. And so, you know, one of the things about we talk about race directors, you know, if you're only doing a couple races a year, you know, buying a system, you might think, you know, it, you know, how's this going to work out? Um, we're also interested in talking to the folks that are, are providing the race services, right? The timing chips and, and whatnot, and we think those could be good partners to cover some of the triathlons and other places, you know, that. Um, you know, because if you're only doing one or two races a year, you know, how, you know, you can have this thing sitting in your closet the rest of the time. So that, that's another audience to the extent that, you know, uh -oh. you're, uh, great folks out there listening that we definitely are eager to talk to those folks as well. Yeah, that's great. And who are some of the people other than yourselves involved that actually created this technology? Yeah, well, I mentioned Dave Cutler is a co-founder. He's the original inventor. Uh, he had a, a company prior, going back over a dozen years ago. He, he developed, uh, I call two previous generations of the of a, a drowning detection. Not not this technology, but one for commercial pools, one for uh, residential pools. Um, and then we got a team of engineers uh, that are you know covering all the hardware and software components of it. Um, uh, Adam mentioned the start, uh, Jack Salerno, who actually we met through Swim Across America. He was uh, one of the original board members, still still a board member there. And uh, Jack and Adam worked actually together in the technology sales world uh, for a while. Um, so he, he's our uh, head of business development. Um, so it's it, it's not not a huge team, but uh, we're getting a lot done. Yeah, yeah. And do you have any um, goals for international sales, international distribution, partners? Uh yeah. Cross borders. Yeah, we, you know, uh, we've had a number of, of inbound inquiries that people have heard about us and, and want to, you know, <laughs> sell our system in their local country. And, and we're definitely uh, having some of those conversations now. Yeah. Um, Australia, as you might imagine, an obvious market given how swim centric they are. Um, and, you know, some scattering in Europe, Middle East, and uh, in the Far East as well. Yeah. Uh, one country that comes to mind immediately is uh, uh, the United Kingdom or collection of countries. And, and one of the reasons why is they really adopted the tow float uh, yes. before, you know, other countries, relative to other countries. And, yep. you know, whether you're in England, um, 
Ireland, Wales, Scotland. The, the, the toe float is, is I would say, the next level. But yeah. you've gone <laughs> well yeah. beyond that next level. Yeah, yeah. You know, the interesting thing, the toe float is great, right? Because that, that obviously answers the question of location, right? Because the person thinks you're going to see that, that, that toe float, you know, where they are. And so it's a nice complement to what we're doing. Because the interesting thing about, um, especially if you're swimming with a wetsuit, as we know, they can be pretty buoyant. And if a person passes out for whatever reason, you know, they, they actually may, may be floating, but their head's down in the water and they're not breathing. And, and, and we detect that. Yeah, so, okay. you know, that would trigger the alert. And if you were scanning and you see a, a toe float and you don't see the guy's head out of water and the thing is, is stationary, yeah. then yeah. you know exactly where the problem is. Wow. And um, remind uh, the audience how did they get in touch with you? Website. Yeah. So uh, the, the website is Wave uh, DDS Drowning, as in Drowning Detection System dot com, and uh, we we have our, our contact in, information on there. Uh, my email is Mark with a K at Wave DDS, and Adam's Adam at Wave DDS dot com. And where are you located? Where's the headquarters? And so we're, we're in uh, Westport, Connecticut. Okay. Um, Adam's out in Indianapolis. We, we got some, you know, folks uh, kind of scattered around the country. We're, we're, we're a, a fairly virtual, so we haven't been too impacted by the lockdown. Yeah. But, um, we've been impacted because we haven't been able to travel and, and uh, see our customers, but um, we're, we're getting a lot done, though, in the meantime. Well, thank you very much for your time. And again, Wave DDS, it's, uh, it's a very cool technology. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Right.